So this arrived just the other day and I will let you know um, my thoughts. Let me start off by saying the R1 AR nil. Here it is. I, I got it. I've been using it now for a, probably a few days um, and I've tried various things um, using it. Um, I've been doing what most people would first do, which is play some games after setting it up. And then later I was trying to use it more as a productivity tool. And then this week I'm going to try and use it sort of more as a productivity tool as I go out through my working week. So let's just start off by saying VR on this is awesome, is is really very good. Um, I would I would liken it to the same level as VR on the Valve Index, if not a bit better because it's a lot lighter on the front end. You've not got a, a lot of weight. Seeing a lot of people complain about some of the comfort levels with this and not having a top strap and tending to be a bit heavy. I've not really found that. I have found the need to adjust it occasionally, um, but that's more of just a case of being a little bit sweaty sometimes because of sort of getting very excited when, when using it. I'm certainly saying a VR game that's sort of kind of energetic. But overall, I've, I've found the, the comfort to be really good the build quality is exceptional. I would I would put it on the same par with with the Valve Index. Um, I've not had any problems with comfort. The battery life does suck, um, but that's easily remedied just with a small battery pack that I just chuck in my pocket and just plug it in, and then I get a, a couple three three hours or so, plus the hour and a half two hours on the internal battery. The little blinders peaky blinders things are uh, do kind of you feel them against your skin a little bit and i and i wonder whether the full vr sort of block out um uh visor thing will have this same quality and if it does i wouldn't be interested and would be more looking to sort of somebody like vr cover but I'm sure they will end up coming out with something very soon. One of the first things that I found just quite frustrating is there's no kind of onboarding really with it. You know, it's aimed at a productivity tool, but the people that are going to be use it, using it have probably never touched VR or AR before. And there's kind of no real introduction. You're kind of thrown into a, a setup sort of a relatively basic setup and then just just hand it into the normal quest environment to be taken seriously by enterprise there's a there's a few things that they need to change um first of all they need to either ha have a, have an option where you can flip but on in terms of the presentation of the sort of the OS when you're sort of when you come in into the store um, instead of the bit just initially just always being this consumer focused store I think you need just one for that's predominantly aimed at, at enterprise as well so it would have a lot of the functions that and tools and platforms the enterprise would want and I think that would be really good because at the moment you kind of have to really hunt around for a lot of the decent productivity stuff and even then it isn't that great really and then some of the setup only happens when you launch certain productivity apps that relate to say augmented reality and then it prom prompts you to set it up rather than being prompted when you you know to, to having an option in your in your sort of environment for an enterprise edition software front end as it were where you could click that and say i want i actually want to set up the um, the room that I'm in or the the desk that I'm using or the keyboard. So I, th I really think they're missing a beat by not having a enterprise sort of front end that you can, you know, you could easily just have it switch from 
the consumer side so if that's what you want to see with vr games and so on or you want to sort of focus more on um cons uh, enterprise um uh, aspects related to the valve to the, the valve index to the quest pro i think i think they really need to think about that the other observation is the when you set up a room um and sort of map out your the scale your room scale um in terms of augmented reality i've got a very odd shaped room and it's not uncommon for rooms to be peculiar shapes and not square boxes. Most rooms are not square boxes. And I found, even though it's still in beta, and really it shouldn't be in beta if this is one of the things they're selling it about uh, in terms of augmented reality, is the, the tools that you use to map out your room are really very frustrating to use, especially with, with this room. I, I gave up eventually i just couldn't get it um, to match even anywhere near close because i've got sort of alcoves and slanty bits and so on and it was just became a bit of a nightmare and then i found that it it it, it sort of on various occasions i couldn't get back into editing and this is a real frustration you would start to map out and say you're getting towards the end and you make a mistake in mapping out your room in, in augmented reality and making the walls and all the objects and so on and say if you make a mistake you just can't go back and delete that mistake you have to start all over again all over again and I did that three four times and I just thought no, this is too much. You know, just allow me to undo the last error rather than having to redo the whole thing. So it, there's, there are some real things that just become irritations with it. There's just so many things that rely on being prompted by other bits of software to then happen that when you buy this you would think well i kind of want to see what this is like you know the things the aspects that they're selling this on only come up when you're using a particular type of software whereas you would really want to see them either through some kind of onboarding which is what i was expecting sort of a more in-depth onboarding um, but there kind of really wasn't nothing fundamentally more than what you get with a normal quest pro so that's why i say vr1 ar nil because the vr aspect is great it's wonderful it's a great vr headset it's incredibly well built it looks wonderful when you're in it it feels comfortable it's not heavy the controllers when they t sometimes wander off a little bit at first when you try and get them to sync up but i found that that tends to happen if you just leave it on and then take it off and then let it charge and then put it back on the controllers tend to have a problem resyncing but if you turn it off and then turn it back on the controllers sync fine this first time around the yeah so but the, the vr thing is great the augmented reality thing just really not buying it so much yet um the color pass through is pretty poor you know you're seeing you and i think facebook should be hauled up on this you're seeing a lot of imagery on the aug augmented reality and the pass through and everything that you're seeing and then the images and the video that they're showing are not representative of what you see through the headset very much not representative not just a little bit but it's it's night and day between the difference between what they're portraying it's going to be and what they're you know sort of saying in all the media coverage and all the advertising and so on and then the reality is just very very different on the pass through they they really need a slap wrist for that because it's not representative at all so those are my initial thoughts i will be doing more as i'm getting used to sort of some of the software some of the the, app, the applications um using it as a sort of a daily driver in terms of working um whether i can do that um and what obstacles i'll face so i'll do more and more videos on that but those are my initial thoughts vr1 ar nil 
Okay, if you like this video, like, subscribe, give me a thumbs up and so on. And uh, I'll see you next time.